Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be solving a nice system, a cubic system. So we're given these two equations, x plus 2y is equal to 3z, and x cubed plus 2y cubed is equal to 3z cubed. x, y, z are distinct real numbers, because think about it, if x and y are equal, that implies that x is equal to z, which means they are all equal. If x, y, z are all equal, then this system is always satisfied, which is not very interesting, don't you think? So, let's go ahead and take a look at the case where x, y, z are distinct, okay? So, we are given this system and we're supposed to find the sum of x, y, z. So, you might be thinking, how am I going to find the sum if I only have two equations but three variables? Is this a Diophantine equation? The answer is no. We're not looking for integer solutions. But guess what? x plus y plus z, we're not asking for x, y, z separately, so maybe we could find it. And let's see how we can do it. Now, I'm going to do the following. I'll take the first equation, let's call this first, and let's call this second, and manipulate this a little bit. So I'm going to write it as x plus 2y equals 2z plus z. Remember that was 3z, but I kind of split it up. And then here's what I'm going to do next. I'm going to bring this x, I mean z, over here by way of subtraction and send the 2y to the right-hand side. And there's a good reason behind it these two expressions have the same coefficient, and x and z obviously have the same coefficient. So I wanted to get something factorable on both sides, and so now I can kind of crisscross applesauce x minus z equals 2z, or not 2z, minus 2y. Okay, and then obviously from here we're going to factor out a 2 and write this as x minus z equals 2 times z minus y. Obviously, this equation is equivalent to our original equation. Let's go ahead and box it because we're going to use this later on, okay? So pay attention. Now, we're going to work with the second equation, which is x cubed plus 2y cubed is equal to 3z cubed. 1, 2, 3. You get the idea? But they're different. Okay. Now let's see. I can do the same thing, right? Well, let's try. I can write the 3z cubed as z cubed plus 2z cubed, and then bring this over here, and then send this over to the right. It's going to be x cubed minus z cubed equals 2z cubed minus 2y cubed. And then by factoring, I can take out a 2. But not only that, I got difference of 2 cubes on both sides. And that's just amazing. That's going to be super helpful. That was the whole idea. Okay? You get it? And obviously, I'm going to be presenting a second method too, and we'll compare our results. Okay. So let's go ahead and factor both sides by using the formula. Remember, difference of two cubes. We just did it, right? In a recent video. We can basically factor it as x squared plus xz plus z squared multiplied by x minus z. Same thing on the right-hand side. Now pay attention to what happens because... It's going to be awesome. Okay. Now, remember, there was an equation that we boxed. What was it? It said x minus z and 2z minus y are proportional. Actually, x minus z is 2 times z minus y. x minus z is 2 times z minus y. Uh-oh, they're equal, so we can just cancel them out. Notice that x and z are different and y and z are different, so they're not zeros. Make sense? Okay, that's important. So we end up with this equation which is great. It's quadratic. The two canceled out too, by the way. Wait a minute. I can factor out, I mean, cancel out. That's what I meant. Z squared. And then something interesting happens. We can go ahead and kind of crisscross again, bring this y squared, and send this xz over to the other side and see what happens. x squared minus y squared equals zy minus xz. Why are we doing this? Because we can factor both sides, right? And when we do, and of course, this is an x minus y, that's a y minus x. Here's the trick. You can negate x minus y to get y minus x. Make sense? Isn't that awesome? So they're opposites. They cancel out, but they leave a negative 1, okay? So now we can go ahead and cross out x minus y. Remember, x minus y 
does not equal zero because x, y, z are distinct. So from here we get, ta-da, x plus y equals negative z. Is that important? Absolutely. What were we looking for? Did you forget? I forgot. Well, I didn't, but let me pretend I forgot. We were looking for x plus y plus z. Uh-oh, that's awesome. So we were looking for the sum, and if you just add z to both sides, you're going to get what? x plus y plus z is equal to zero, which is what we were looking for. Make sense? Awesome. Now, here's a million dollar question. Before I show you the second method, maybe we can talk about a third method. And why am I skipping? Because I just want to get it over with. So when I saw this problem, I thought about, okay, I do see cubes. So can I just cube both sides? Why not, right? Let's go ahead and cube both. Oops, I wrote square. I don't know why. Cube both sides. And when I did, I kind of got this. x cubed plus 8y cubed plus 3 times that, which is 6xy multiply by x plus y. That's the identity I use all the time, almost all the time. And that's 27z cubed. And from here, I noticed that I can replace x plus 2y with z. So that would give me 6xyz. And then that is going to equal, right, x plus y? Actually, no, no. It's 3z. Yes, not just z. So this is going to become 18xy. Yes, xyz, I mean. Equals 27z cubed. Hmm. Is that going to help at all? Maybe I can use the second equation one more time. What was the second equation? x cubed plus 2y cubed equals 3z cubed. Now, let's go ahead and subtract this from both sides. That's going to give me x cubed plus 8y cubed is equal to 27z cubed minus 18xyz. I'm thinking I could probably multiply both sides by 9. The first equation, can't I? If I do, that's going to give me 9x cubed plus 18y cubed equals 27z cubed. And then I can subtract these two equations, so negate, sorry about my arrows, negate the first equation, the top one, and then let's see if we can add them. And if this is going to give us something, I don't, I don't know. I'm just trying, okay? I don't even know the outcome. And from here, I'm getting 8x cubed plus 10y cubed is equal to 18xyz. Not very helpful. If I divide by 2, I'm going to get something like this. And I don't even know if this is going to help. You see, we have the x, 4 plus 5 equals 9 again. That's such a weird, spooky situation that we keep getting, right? But anyways, I don't know if this is going to help at all. Maybe there's a way to solve this problem because I'm thinking, by the way, let's not forget that we're supposed to find x plus y plus z. So it may not come out that easy. Anyways, I just share with you. Let me go ahead and talk about the second method real quick. And then we'll finish up. All right. So our system was x plus 2y equals 3z. And x cubed plus 2y cubed equals 3z. Hopefully you memorized it. And we we're supposed to find x plus y plus z. So this is what I'm thinking. Since x plus y plus z does not depend on particular values, why not use some values for x, y, z? Just make them up. Like, I don't know x can be 1, uh, and then y can be something that will make a multiple of 3, I think would be good, maybe 4. Okay, and in that case, but well, here's the problem. If you set it up that way, you're not going to get the same z from these equations. So I only need to make up one value. How about y equals 0, right? If y is 0, do you think that's going to work? x is going to be 3z, and then x cubed is going to be 3z cubed. If I cube this, I'm going to get 27z cubed, which is going to equal this. Okay, z is going to be 0. I don't want that, so maybe I should set y equal to 1. Okay, anyways, you get the idea. Plug it in and see if you can get x plus y plus z as 0. And this brings us to the end of this video. Well, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and... Bye-bye.